and go. Relax belly, repeat. Relax belly, repeat. Again. Hello. Oh, it's 20 minutes before it started. If you want to know, then come and join. Whoever is coming, please raise your hand and take a cup. Okay. If you don't have a cup, please ask for a cup. Ah, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. This cafe is a good sign, it's not a bad sign. Don't worry about it. So, in the huffing technique, this is how we start. Now, the second part, same. Repeat the huffs without inhale. The only thing is now we add a few squeezes, inner squeezes. It's almost as if we use the inner muscles in the body to squeeze. How do we start to squeeze? We start by squeezing at the lowest portion in the pelvic, lower abdomen area. That area, inner muscles we use to squeeze. Then we go higher. We use the lower ones and then slightly higher ones, which means the upper abdomen, etc. And then all the way up to the chest. We can actually inner squeeze everything. So as you do the huff, you do the squeeze inner. You know, the inner squeeze. Pelvic area, higher and so on. So we'll do this five times. Take a slow deep breath in. Belly relaxed. And go. Inner squeeze. Again. Inner squeeze. Again.
our body, our conditions change all the time and number of things affect the way number of things. Each one of them is playing a role. So we don't wish to we don't we don't wish to fight our body. We wish to use our body to get the best result out of whatever we do. Our body is an instrument. So we will not make an enemy with the body. So that the body says, Nee, I will not And then you push it and then you create some uh, trouble in the body. So we don't do that. Listen to your body. If your body is not very happy with it, slow down. Don't stop the practice. Very often when we start doing something good, for example, if you, say, if you, for example, if you go running the first day, your body will ache. Now your body says, no, I don't want to run. I hate to run. But who is the master? Is the body the master or are you the master? If you are the master, what will you do? You will continue. Maybe second day you will run a little less because your body is not Three days, four days, maybe you will run a little less. Again, you will slowly increase. Right? That is how you win over your body. Right? Similarly here, the first time, second time you try something new, maybe somebody's body might react in a certain way. We don't want to fight. We want to, we want to master our body. We want to do, we want the body to do what we want it to do. Right, once again, slow deep breath. Belly relax and go. Please. Again. And again. Again. Repeat. Clean breath. Keep your belly relaxed always. Super relaxed. Very good. Keep throwing out any plan that comes, that moves up. Keep throwing it out. So we do this about five times. Have we done this five times? The squeeze? Now we come to a super effective and super powerful technique which I call the Krishna's flute maneuver. Who is Krishna? Who is Krishna? Huh? Lord Krishna? The one who gave us the Bhagavad Gita? Right? And you think of him as really special. God or whatever, you know, there are different people and so on. Gopis think of him as their lover, right? Or think of themselves as his as his lover. He plays the flute. Right? He plays the flute. What does the flute have? What do the holes do? Music, not sound. They make music. Right? Krishna's flute. And the holes in that flute, when Krishna blows into that flute, he makes music. Beautiful, ethereal music. Can win anybody's heart. That's the kind of music he plays. Right? What are we going to do with our breath? We are going to do the Krishna's flute maneuver. <clears throat> what is the Krishna's flute maneuver? We take a full deep breath in. We don't take a breath. It's Krishna. After all, everyone is breathing. It is Krishna's breath. Krishna is breathing into us. What do we need to do? We need to keep our bones working in such a way that our life becomes a harmonious expression of the breath. So we do the Krishna's flute maneuver, a very interesting and a very powerful technique <coughs> that works <coughs> directly on your sushumna. I mentioned that earlier. So just as you were doing the huffing technique just now and you were doing the squeezes, in the Krishna's flute maneuver, you take your full breath in, Allow the first breath, don't do anything. Allow the first full breath, that exhale. <sighs> and then you stop. With the second breath, we start engaging different chakra levels. Different, we squeeze at different chakra levels. We start by first squeezing at the, at the muladhara. 
देन मूलाधार स्वादिष्ठान मूलाधार स्वादिष्ठान मणिपुरा सो इंस्टेड ऑफ सेइंग ऑल दीज नेम्स व्हाट आई विल डू इज आई विल से सिंपली वन वन टू वन टू थ्री वन टू थ्री फोर सो दैट व्हाट यू व्हाट यू अंडरस्टैंड बाय दैट इज व्हेन आई से वन इट्स मूलाधार वन टू इज मूलाधार एंड स्वादिष्ठान manipura is uh, muladhar swadishan manipura all three together because we want to get this movement as if we are moving something up along the spine up along the sushumna where does the sushumna run it runs through the spinal cord towards the back right that is all the chakra to clean to cleanse the sushumna means you are you have now started indirectly working on your chakra because as the sushumna is cleansed and cleared it will take away whatever is there in the uh, in the, the chakra huh? <clears throat> slow deep breath in this time you will allow the first exhale <sighs> relax your belly and then muladhar one squeeze one squeeze one two Squeeze one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Give him a cup. Very good. Very good. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Whatever is coming, throw it out. Thank you. Very good. Once again, slow, deep breath in, full breath, uh, full breath. Allow the first exhale. Relax your belly. Now, Krishna's fruit maneuver one, one two, one two three, one two three four, one two three five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In bed. Do you feel a subtle change in the quality of your bed, anyone? Or it's too early? What is the difference? What do you feel? Yes, he's already feeling it. He says there's a little smoothness in the breath. Anyone else? Okay, very good. One, two. Yes, that's right. As you continue, this will grow. The smoothness of your breath, lighter, smoother, easier, subtler. Very good. Continue once again. Full, slow, deep breath in. And relax, Teddy. Krishna's fruit one. One two. One two three. One two three four. One two three four five. One two three four five six. One two three four five six seven. In. Yeah, clear. Throw it out. Throw out what is coming. Don't hold it back. Anybody wants a cup? Anybody? Yeah. See, you see the difference. When you started with the simple half, some of you started coming. When you went a little deeper into the squeezes, some more. And then with the Krishna sprout maneuver, more is happening. What is happening is basically cleansing. You are basically cleansing your system. Cleansing your system is an extremely important part of you. And in this case, it is especially so because it works directly on. one of the most critical aspects of your life your breath life begins with the first breath and it ends with the last one so sara saans ka khela hai but people think the breath is only to give you life which of course is a big thing but that's not the only thing it can also give you good health and a lot more the breath can actually give you a not not just good health but a lot more. not just life not just good health also a lot more in other aspects of your life the less important aspects but even so they are important to us 
Breath can help you there as well. Once again, slow deep breath in. And <laughs> relax your belly. One. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, six. One, two, seven. Once again, hold the system. Hold the system. Once again, in breath. <coughs> See, it puts pressure on your system, it cleanses beautifully. As you go deeper into the practice, you can intensify. You can actually increase the pressure. Initially, I will not ask you. Go easy. Let your body become used to it. Let your body enjoy it. As the quality of your breath improves, as you start breathing easier, smoother, lighter and so on, you will begin to see why this is so important. And each time you do this, you will feel a certain sense of wellness which, has, which is almost incomparable in so many ways. It's so beautiful when you, when you are able to breathe smooth, light, easy. Some people have lung conditions like I used to have COPD. Some have asthma and so on. But if you are able to cleanse the system, if you are able to breathe better, it feels very, very comfortable, nice, enjoyable and so on. Once again, slow deep breath. When I say slow deep breath, you can add one more aspect, which is keep your tongue touching the roof of your mouth. The, the tip of your tongue may touch the back of your teeth. So, keep the tongue this way, keep your stomach, keep your whole belly area super relaxed. In breath. And. And then one. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Two. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, seven. Whole system. All seven. Again. Okay. Same <coughs> So this Krishna's flute maneuver. This is, we start with the huffing technique. We have three parts in the huffing technique. Normal breath but stop go. When we do the stop go, it's not as if we stop midway. We exhale whatever needs to be exhaled. <clears throat> then we stop and then there's some more available. We expel that again. This is how we do it. It's not as if we ration the first breath. No. The first breath we throw out, we expel as much as we can. Right? We empty it and then we go for the second and so on. That's the first part. Second part is, you do the same thing, but you add some gentle squeezes in different parts of the, of the body. Why do we add these gentle squeezes? Why don't we jump straight into the Krishna's fruit maneuver, which is actually just the most sophisticated kind of squeezes? Because the Krishna's fruit maneuver is more, is targeting your sushunna directly. The squeezes are still not targeting your sushunna. They are only working on the whole system. And kapha can be in different parts of the body. So we just want to squeeze it out gently, just move it up. So the movement is always this way. As if you're squeezing it upwards this way, like in a massage, you're moving with your breath, you're moving it up this way because you're channeling your uh, kapha up along the spine through the sushumna. Sushumna is in many ways like your main electrical supply. The energy in your body, the electrical energy in your body is basically coming through the sushumna and being distributed all over the body. So it is the main electrical supply. Sushumna works well, the energy in your body changes. It is also the main drainage system in your body. See, this is what I am saying out of my own observations. I am not saying this out of any book, any pradipika or any, any other exposition of a yogi, uh, yogi or a guru or someone. Only through my own observations, 
If it is at some variance with whatever you have learned or studied, please pardon me. I am not as great as them. I am only sharing what I have experienced. So if you feel there is some variation, pardon me. You do your own research. You do your own observations. See what your own observations might tell you. So in my understanding, the Sushumna is not only the main electrical supply, it's also the main drainage system. So all these vyadis inside us, all these, you know, vyadis is the word? Is that right? right? Yeah. They leave us through the Sushumna. So very often people say, gas. <coughs> and then they say, gas mathe mein chalti. Now how, the, the digestive system does not go to the matha. How does that gas go to the matha? Or sometimes when people feel acid or acidic, they feel chest mein, you know, chhati mein ho gaya, jalan ho gaya. So your digestive system is not coming here. So why is that jalan here? It's obviously moving through the sushumna. Abhi recently COVID happened. COVID, I also got COVID. And I noticed that COVID was hitting my sushumna directly. I'm a, I'm a very Sushumna sensitive person because I've been doing my breath work, etc. I have noticed how the Sushumna works, how things change when the Sushumna starts working, acting, you know, expanding, becoming more activated. It changes the quality of your life in many subtle and not so subtle ways. It actually makes a huge difference in the way your life is run. Because the energy system in your, in your body is working a little differently. A little more efficiently. If the systems are working efficiently, naturally you will start moving towards your highest potential. If your systems are working well, naturally you will start moving towards your highest potential. What is your highest potential? What is your highest potential? That is yet to be discovered. All you can do is create conditions so that your movement to the highest potential becomes smooth, becomes easy. That is what you need to do. And learning how to breathe right, keeping your respiratory system well helps you tremendously because after all, this is the central most part of your prana body. Annamai kosh, pranamai kosh, manumai kosh, Vigyanamai Kosh and Anandamai Kosh. Everyone pays attention to the Anandamai Kosh. Most of us are run by the uh, Manumai Kosh. We have very little understanding, appreciation or focus on the Pranamai Kosh. But it's your Pranamai Kosh that connects all of these, gets all of them to function in a way that you can get the best out of your body. Ultimately, doi to cheese hai. Ultimately, in the ultimate analysis, there are only two things, Shiva and Shakti, that's all there is to it. Only Shiva and Shakti or kuch nahi hai. In your body, each chakra level is the level of consciousness. If your energy, if the Shakti reaches that level, that is the consciousness you will express through your life. If your consciousness is at the Muladhan, that is where your expression will be about survival, about existing and so on and so forth. If your consciousness is at the, at the Swadishtan, that is how your, your life will express itself. So what must you do? You must move your Shakti all the way to the, of course Sahasra, but you should also be able to move it as required. Why you are living? Unless you become a yogi in the Himalayas and you want to keep your Shakti here in the Sahasra, that's up to you. But if you are living the life of a common man, you should, to reach your highest potential, you should be able to access all of these consciousnesses as required. Sometimes you have to look after your body. You must look after your body. Nothing wrong with that. That is why life has given you this body. You must look after it. You must look after it well. So if, if I am going to hit you, it is your duty to protect yourself. Just because you are a yogi doesn't mean that anybody can come and hit you and ride over you or step on you. No. Your first duty is to keep yourself protected, to look after your own well-being. Only when your own well-being is looked after can you look after somebody else's well-being. 
if you cannot look after yourself, can you look after your, your family? Yes or no? Can you? No, you can't. You have to look after yourself, you have to look after your family. Only when you are able to look after your family well, will you be able to look after a greater number of people in society? You will be able to do something to them? Yes or no? So what is happening? Your consciousness is evolving, it's changing. So, supposing your consciousness has evolved and you are able to do all of this, you still must be able to function at all different levels. So if you learn how to move your energy through the system, you will be able to function at every level. And nothing wrong with that. Until one day you decide to become a yogi. In the Himalayas or in the Vilangiri Vilangir hills or wherever. Or maybe here also, who knows? <laughs> Can you be? Mani? Acha? No problem. Until then, function to your optimal, to the best. And nothing can do, nothing can work on you as well as your own prana. If you learn how to use your prana, if you cleanse the systems through which the prana works. Many people nowadays talk about Kundalini. What is Kundalini? What is Kundalini? It is energy. It is energy that we say is coiled at the base of the spine because most people are just trying to survive. But if that energy starts moving, then the reflection comes in other aspects of your life. Kundalini to sab mein or sab mein to some extent or the other, it is working in its own way. Problem is, you know, for, with many people, the energy gets stuck in one particular chakra. The energy is stuck in one particular chakra, so they are not able to make the most of their life. They never reach their highest potential. Therefore, kisi ko cigarette pini ki aadat hai, to sara jivan cigarette pita jayega. Sharap pini ki aadat hai, sara jivan sharap pita jayega. Or there are many other habits. Breathing wrong is also a habit. So if we breathe in a certain way, in a wrong way, it is affecting everything in our lives, but we are not able to change it because our energy is stuck in a certain way. We don't make a special effort. To make that special effort requires will power. Will power is available to us only when our own pranas are somewhat under our control. If our pranas are not under our control, how can we have any will power? How can you use any will power? You will not be able to express your will power. You will not be able to use your will power. You will only keep reacting to whatever is happening in life. Kisi ne aapko ek gali de di, aapko usko chaar de di. What a waste. <coughs> so one thing I like to talk about sometimes is the power of attention. Aapke paas paise hai jeep mein? You have some money in your pockets. No? Next time, when you go to your apartment, to your room or wherever you are, take some money and just throw it out. Thik do. Why won't you throw your money? It's a resource. It has a certain value. It has a resource. It's a resource. What does it do? For survival, or it is necessary because you can buy essential things for survival, right? It's called attention. Pay money, pay attention. Look at the beauty of this. Pay attention. What do you pay attention to? Hmm? No, that is with the money. But what do you pay attention to? How do you use your resource called attention? If you use the resource or attention to better your own life, you will get the most out of it. So if you focus your attention, for example, on your breath, your breath will guide you. If you focus your attention on what Shah Rukh Khan does, guy from Dwarf, that is where your life is going to be focused. How will you reach your own highest potential? So to reach your highest potential, this resource called attention has to be very, very carefully used, spent. Wherever your attention goes, there your life will go. Inside your body also, wherever your attention goes, your energy will move there. 
So when you keep your attention on your breath, you are able to move your energy in different ways and work through your own endocrine system, through the chakra system, clear blockages and get the best out of your life. Once again, we'll do the Krishna's maneuver with the hugging technique and it's past 7 o'clock but we're just doing a little extra because we started a little late. So once again, slow deep breath. <coughs> And come out, stop, relax the belly. One. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Four system. Again. So that's it for today. This is it. Tomorrow we'll work on the second aspect of the Krishna of the uh, having of the Shvasko Shuddhi Kriya. Uh, if you like, do you have a pen and paper? <coughs>